I'm happy that the American election was a model, as it should be, um, of you know people having very strong differences of opinion and then waiting peacefully in line to cast their ballots because that's the most important thing they could do. I think signing of the peace pact as soon as possible by all parties and commitment to peace and to elections being run properly by all of the parties involved. And I, we've hear, we're hearing those signals properly is incredibly important. Um, whether it's wet signatures on a peace pact or just you know officials saying, I commit that Ghana's elections will be a model. The relationship with Ghana will remain extremely important to the United States, um, even with change of administration. Ghana is so important to the United States for every reason that you'll see a continuation of that great deep relationship and maybe deepening. Ghana is the fourth country in Africa, I think, where we've announced it. We also have um, instituted that policy in Europe and Latin America. Um, it's not directed at the government of Ghana or at particular political parties, but we can not just refuse visas, but revoke visas for people who inter undermine or interfere with Ghana's democratic process. Um, I think it's a very useful tool to have. I hope I don't have to use it. Um, I hope it will deter bad behavior um, and hate speech. Um, and I hope that um, I'll call again for you know, early signing of the peace pact. I'll call on political leaders to come down hard on other candidates in races down the ticket or even people just raising a ruckus in, um, in constituencies across the nation for, for coming out and saying that's not the kind of election we want to have. I saw a great poster. I went to see the northern um, regional minister or the regional minister for northern region. And um, he had a sign, that big sign on the front door that said, don't insult your political opponents, um, which I thought, well, that sums it up. Um, and um, that's, that's a good message. Um, so it's a tool we have available. You'll see more of it around the world. Ghana's not singled out, nor is the government of Ghana or any political party, but we are not afraid to use it if, um, if there are any parties, any people or parties that, um, that undermine your democracy. So I hope that you will regard it as a useful tool. Anybody else? Well, you've given me a good frame for that, which is that LGBTQ rights or the rights of LGBTQ people are not special rights. They, there's no such thing as LGBTQ rights. Those are human rights. Um, and I've been very careful not to engage in a moral conversation in Ghana and to approach this with humility um, and to say, I'm not having a conversation about the morality, you need to have a conversation around your dinner table or at church about those things. But um, I'm saying please honor the rights that are enshrined in Ghana's constitution and in the international instruments like the Universal Declaration of Human Rights um, that Ghana is a party to. Um, because discrimination of any kind is bad for your economy, for your political life, and for, so for social life. And, um, and I think also inconsistent if I may, with Ghana's like really deeply respected values of tolerance. It's, it's the thing that I most respect about and admire about Ghana. And um, I've been quiet about the issue um, since it's been before the courts. Um, and I, again, hope that the Ghana's constitution and the, the human rights that Ghana's constitution protects will prevail. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And again, I'm sincere about what I'm saying about your role in elections. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.